beautiful souls. Welcome back to my channel. If you are brand new here, welcome. I'm Bonnie, Old Soul Mermaid. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at some of my recent acquisitions. These are largely mass market decks that have kind of sadly fallen down the pecking order in my wish list because there is always a Kickstarter or a pre-order going on. So if you'd like to see what decks these are that I've recently acquired, stick around. to separate the decks by where I purchased them. Now, all of these decks, I didn't go on a major spending spree. These, I've been acquiring these decks, you know, over a matter of weeks, some months. And so what I'm gonna do is show you the decks that I've gotten from my local or various locations of half price books and also decks that I've purchased from Amazon. So. Let me show you the decks that I've purchased from Half Price Books first. First out of the gate is Chiro Marchetti's Gilded Reverie Lenormand, the expanded edition. So this edition has a bunch of extra cards and it is in this beautiful magnetic box. Isn't that wonderful? So I found this at one of my local Half Price Books. This is a beautiful, beautiful Lenormand deck. I mean, it's a little bit larger than your standard Lenormand. So if you see, it's a little bit larger than the poker bridge style Lenormand cards that we know, but it's still not too large that you couldn't do a grand tableau with it. Um, truth be told, I don't generally resonate or Chiro's art doesn't resonate with me. Um, his tarot decks. I had one and I rehomed it because I just couldn't read with it. There's something about, usually I find his art, what's the term, overproduced for me. Um, I think it's gorgeous and I think it's beautiful, but it's just, you know, we all have different tastes and um, I can understand why so many people love his art. It is beautiful. Um, I find with a Lenormand deck that disconnect doesn't happen because, you know, it's a different system and those intuitive hits that you need to get in a tarot deck, you know, you don't really need to get with a Lenormand deck, you know, as far as the imagery, you just have to like the imagery and it has to be clear. You know, you have to know that the, this is a mice card. You have to know that this is the heart card. So with Lenormand, it's a little bit different. This is a glossy cardstock and it's beautifully produced. It's gilded edges. And um, I got this so inexpensively at my local half price books. It's like, it's in pristine condition and I got it for $5.99. Yeah, $5.99. I couldn't believe it. And that is Chiro Marchetti's Gilded Reverie Lenormand Expanded Edition. Next, we have the Tattoo Tarot Ink and Intuition deck. And this is a deck that I think is beautiful and I have wanted for such a long time. Now, I got this from Half Price Books. It was very economical at $9.99 box was in perfect condition. I think, you know, um, there was a visit where I got two decks or three decks. It's like, um, people have been dumping their, their tarot collections. 
So uh, the Lenormand deck I showed you before was opened. This is open, but it's like in pristine condition. Those are the backs. Now I have the eight coins tattoo tarot by US Games. And that is a fully illustrated um, deck. It has fully illustrated uh, pips where this is an actual pip deck. And it's one of those decks I wanted to help me because it, it kind of edges more towards Marseille. And I thought that it would be a great deck to kind of help me in that direction because it's a direction I want to, I want to go and I want to learn. But I think that these cards are just beautiful, limited color palette, but something very modern and yet classical about the artwork. And let's skip ahead. Here are the beautiful quartz. I think the quartz are gorgeous. Gorgeous. Up close, personal vantage point, and here are the pips. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful deck. I really like the cardstock too. And um, I'm this deck has been on my wish list for years. And when I saw it at my half price books, I was over the moon over the moon to get it at such a wonderful price in pristine condition. I don't think, I think, you know, it was just opened and it was never used. And that is the Tattoo Tarot Ink and Intuition. Next we have the Fairy Tale Lenormand by Lisa Hunt and Arwen Lynch. This is a Lenormand deck I have wanted. Of course, I've I want the tarot, but you can't get that anymore. I've heard that they're going to reprint the tarot make it available again but that could be just a rumor let me know in the comments below if you know that to be a ca the case this deck was sealed and i got it for 10.99 i believe it was very very economical brand new deck i was just floored i could not believe it because this has been on my wish list forever. Literally, I think people have been dumping um, their or decluttering their tarot collections because I've been really lucky over the last couple of months or weeks um, to find some of these things that I could, you know, that I have in my Amazon wish list or Amazon cart. And it's nice when I find them at half price books at such an economical price. But this is the fairy tale Lenormand by Lisa Hunt and Arwen Lynch. Next, we have the Sun and Moon Tarot by Vanessa DeCourt, another deck that I have wanted for a very long time. I believe the Sun and Moon Tarot um, follows or loosely follows the Thoth, Thoth system. And it's a reason why I've held off on it for a while because I haven't delved into it yet. I haven't learned the Thoth. I don't even have a traditional, you know, the Thoth deck uh, with the artwork by Lady Frida Harris. Um, so uh, I kind of find this artwork a little bit more palatable and maybe approachable if I want to start nudging and going in to learn that system. I do have Marseille um, on the top of the list though over Thoth, but I have, I. I find something very sweet about the artwork, even though the the little characters don't have faces. And I think this deck incorporates astrology and mythology in it. And it's kind of a deep little deck and it's so sweet. I know many people have trimmed it and cut off the, um, the keywords and the borders, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, number one, I don't trust myself. I don't have a guillotine cutter and I just don't trust myself with cutting it. It would just make me mad if I screwed something up. Yes, failure. I would feel that and it would, it would just bug me <laughs> because I found this deck for $7.99 and it's in pristine condition. There's not even any shelfware on the box. It came unwrapped, but it's in pristine condition. No dirt, no grime on the white, you know, on the sides. It feels new. It, it feels like someone maybe 
flipped through it and then you know it just sat somewhere and then they decided to declutter because they weren't using it so we will see if i use it let me know what your experience is with this little deck is and if it does with my understanding um sort of follow the the thoth system and tradition and this is the sun and moon tarot by vanessa Descartes. Next, we have the Yggdrasil Norse Divination Cards, and this is a Llewellyn publication with their big, beautiful box. When I got this, it was sealed, and I got it for $12.99. $12.99. All right, those are the beautiful backs. Now, Norse mythology is something I've been curious about and wanting to delve more into. I know a little bit more about Celtic, um, mythology and a little bit of Roman and Greek but nothing about Norse because and which is really surprising because I am half Swedish but something has held me off because I have problems with that side of the family on my father's side the Swedish side because it is the most dysfunctional side of my family and it is the Mormon side of my family, though my mother did, did convert, but um, a lot of dysfunction. Um, and so I thought this deck maybe in some way may help me heal my um, issues with that side of the family. I'm, I'm not sure. Learning the, myth the mythology, maybe learning something um, that will bring me a closer to that side of the family. Um, I just found that there was a great disconnect. I, I felt no warmth from that side of the family. My mother's side, the Mexican side, was far more warm and energetic and nurturing than, um, you know, the the Swedish side of my family so I'm just I'm just hoping or I'm looking for something that will help me kind of bridge that gap maybe heal that part of the shadow of myself the issues I have with that side of the family I don't know you'll have to stay tuned um, I'm very very interested in delving into the guidebook and working with this system and that is the Yggdrasil Norse Divination Card Set. So, I did find a copy of the Wild Unknown Tarot Deck, Indie Edition, the first Indie Edition, and I was so excited. Now, I did verify that this is a first edition, and yeah, I did a lot of study. I bought it, did a lot of um, looking up, on the interwebbings and yes it's got the little cheat sheet it's a little bit torn here but I'm gonna tape that up so this is the original little cheat sheet now I do have the mass market edition of this deck now this deck is not a deck there's the backs that is a workhorse for me, but I find it magical just the same. I think there's a couple of cards that are different from the uh, mass market edition, but I really like this edition. I love the card stock. It's not, it's, well, it doesn't have a bow. It's in pretty good condition, but something you know, when I was looking in the cabinet, it something told me to get it. I, I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist a first edition of The Wild Unknown. Next, we're going to go into decks that I actually purchased uh, from Amazon, where I have a very long wish list of decks. And this is The Guardian Tarot by Beth Silenin. I hope, or Silenin, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. This deck I first discovered on Liz's channel, uh, Tarot for the Heathens. Oh, and these are the beautiful backs. And it's a glossy, glossy cardstock, and it's produced by Red Feather. 
I found something very jarring about this imagery and something very soothing at the same time. It reminds me, and they're very different decks, but for some reason this reminds me a little bit of a softer version of the Marielle Tarot. And let me know in the comments if that makes sense to you. This seems like a little less jarring and a little bit more soothing. And I haven't really worked with this deck yet. You can see it's still in order because I just really got it within the last week and a half to two weeks. I think it's beautiful. And not always, but when I do spirit guide meditations and trying to connect with my spirit guides, sometimes they come out looking something similar to this. And that was before I even, you know, was aware of the imagery in this deck. I don't know how this is going to read for me, but there was something, just something calling to me when I first saw it on Liz's channel. And I, it, she has a, a kind of a deep dive video and I'll link it in the cards above if I can find it. Um, going over the deck and she has two copies of it where one of which I think she clipped off or she superimposed somehow um, her own titles or keywords for the cards. And so she has two decks, one that I think that she left alone and then the other one that she um, that she kind of made to fit her way of reading and I don't know I think she did an uh, a declutter video where maybe she was getting rid of one of the copies maybe the one that she left intact but there's something something I find very evocative about this deck and maybe when I work with it, I'll be able to pinpoint it. But let me know in the comments below if you have this deck and what your experiences with it have been. And this is the Guardian Tarot by Beth Silomon. Now, I just got the Enchanted Map Oracle Cards by Colette Baron reed in the mail last week, mid, mid last week. Now this is a Hay House production and it's their upgrade, their updated version of this deck with the images that are borderless. I believe they changed the cardstock. It has a little bit of a gloss, but not a ton. It feels more matte than um, I believe the previous edition. I do not have the previous edition, but I believe it was more like um, the wisdom of the Oracle y'all know this deck it's a favorite of many and this feels a little bit more matte and I prefer this cardstock even though it still has a little bit of a gloss as you can see it's um, not as glossy as the wisdom of the Oracle or the original as I'm led to believe of this deck I do love that they made it borderless so I had to get it I had to get it and I thought, you know, I'm going to hold off on getting this because I really do love the um, wisdom of the Oracle and do I need two decks that are kind of the same? But when they came out with this um, beautiful borderless edition with slightly different cardstock, I said, yeah, I'm going to do it. And I had some points, so um, I didn't have to pay very much for it and I just got it. Um, it'll be interesting to see if it will take the place of my Wisdom of the Oracle. I don't know if it will because I really love that deck, but you know, I think I'll probably end up loving this one too. Oh, I love this. Dolphins. Now I was looking at uh, watching one of Lisa Pappas's recent videos, um, maybe one of her decluttering videos recently in the last, I think I watched it last week or over the weekend and she was talking about the cardstock and she doesn't like the new Hay House cardstock. I love it. This is the spell cast, 
casting oracle cards by Flavia Kate Peters and Barbara Mickle John Free. And this is that, um, you know, the wisdom of the oracle. I really, really love this super matte cardstock. It now, the new enchanted matte cardstock feels a little bit more glossy, but it feels more like this than it does this. For those of you who are thinking of buying it or whether or not you think um, you need to get this one, if you're debating because you have the original version, I really like the super matte cardstock <laughs> and it just proves how different we all are. But uh, sorry about that. I just moved my camera arm. But just to let you know, in case you were um, in a quandary, if you really need the same, you know, two of the same deck, if you already have the original version. And this is the Enchanted Map Oracle Cards by Colette Baron Reed. So here I have the wonderful Line Strider Tarot by Ciolo Thompson. I have wanted this deck pretty much from the beginning of my tarot journey. But then I realized I discovered Kickstarter and pre-orders and this again fell down the pecking order on my wish list. And I ended up getting the other Kintero by Ciolo Thompson first because it had mermaids in it. Yeah, that's what that's why I picked that one first. And I love that deck. There's something about the purification, just kind of cleansing the palette with the white space in her decks. And some I love decks. I gravitate toward um, towards decks that are full color and you know just full fully illustrated. But then a deck like this and her other Kintero are very, very kind of palette cleansing for me. And I really, really enjoy them. And this deck, I know I'm gonna love as much as I do the other kin. She does have a new Oracle out. I don't have her, is it the Hedwitch Botanical yet? But she also has another Oracle deck, Winter something. Winter Song, Winter, no, that's a Sarah McLaughlin Christmas album. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's animals and nature, and I'm going to have to look at that. But this is one that I've wanted forever, and I finally, 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 finally got it. And I am very much thrilled. And that is the Lion Strider Tarot by Ciolo Thompson. Next, we have a deck that only got to me a couple of days ago, and it is the Hoodoo Tarot by Tiana Lee McQuiller. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I, this has been on my wish list for a long, long time. It's still in order. I just kind of went through the deck in order because this is a, this is a deck I want to go through the book, you know, in order. I don't want to do any readings with it until I've read through the guidebook with the card. Um, it's something that has just kind of beckoned to me and I'm going, no, maybe someone like me shouldn't get a deck like this. Um, but I have been fascinated by it. I've seen a lot of walkthroughs and people who have worked with it and yeah, this card. Um, I find it very haunting. I think, you know, this is not my culture, but there's something very deep and I find it, I think it's calling to me to, again to, to do ancestor work with it, even though this isn't my culture. Um, this isn't my ancestry. There is something about it that's calling me to work with it in that way. And we'll see, we'll see. I'm going to go through the book, you know, I'm going to read through the book, study the book first with the card in order, probably do some journaling before I even try to read with it. And um, we'll see how it goes, but there's just something about this deck that is called to me. Um, we'll see. 
we'll see how it goes and I'll keep you updated. I really would like to know um, what your experience has been working with this deck, both if um, you are a person of color and also if you're not, if, you, if your ancestry is 180 degrees away, um, let me know how this deck is read for you. It called to me. I don't know why. Um, if it's for awareness, if it's to learn something, obviously I need to learn a lot of things. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm just really excited to see what kind of conversations I'm going to have with this deck and insights that I'll gain. And I hope it's going to be a good relationship because it did call to me. Um, so it's going to be very, very interesting. And this is the Hoodoo Tarot by Tiana Lee McQuiller. And the artwork is by Caitlin V. Foise. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And we've got one last little mass market deck. And it's the very last one because I actually picked it up at a bookstore at my local Barnes & Noble. And it's right here. You've been looking at it the whole time. It is the Rider Waite Playing Card Deck by US Games. I saw this on um, Kelly Fitzgerald's channel, The Truth and Story. And I think her video was titled a writer weight RWS deck I like or something to that um, nature. Now look at how cute this little box is. Isn't this the cutest? Though if you get this deck, know that the suction isn't, you can't pick the deck up like that or you're going to lose everything. But it's really, really sweet. Hard, hard cover cute little white book for my little vintage heart it is so beautiful now i'm not a card playing girl i really am not but um card playing was kind of discouraged in my house growing up and so you know card games other than old maid were not something you know that my family played or that I participated in but I do like playing cards and my husband used to collect them for a time and I do have a collection of playing cards which I will probably share with you at some point if you're interested in seeing that let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see my playing card collection but you could play card games with this you can use it um, for carry it around with you in your bag for divination it is a wonderful size for that now i wish the box was a little bit had a tighter seal i wish you know they would have put this in a tin because it would have been perfect but i love the tea stain in this geez i hope my my uh phone is picking this up but the beige is all tea stained. It's antiqued. I think it's wonderful. And it's an economical deck. And I found it while I was at my local Barnes and Noble and I had to pick it up. And this is a deck you can't find on Amazon. That's why I went to Barnes and Noble. Um, what is up with US Games? I know there's a lot of decks on their website up for pre-order. Um, I guess they're not doing Amazon anymore. We saw that with um, the Dreamkeeper's Tarot, the Tarot of Mystical Moments, and some other decks. I guess they're they're just not gonna sell their new releases and do pre-orders with Amazon. And that's disappointing, especially for those of you who are overseas and US games, you know, won't ship to you overseas and you have to wait for, um, other other avenues to get a US games deck decks and I think that's very very disappointing but let me know let me know what you think of this little uh, playing card right away playing card deck so I hope you enjoyed that look of my recent beautiful mass market acquisitions let me know in the comments below 
Do mass market decks sometimes, you know, fall down the pecking order for you because of Kickstarter and uh, indie pre-orders? Yeah, let me know. What do you tend to gravitate towards first? And what do you have more in your collection, the mass market or the indie decks? I want to know all your thoughts. Please leave it in the comments below. And with that, I will leave you to get on with your beautiful day. Bye for now.